This video is a reminder about how to factor quadratics when the leading coefficient isn't 1. This method will only work when we are talking about a quadratic expression that has a trinomial, in other words, three terms in it. If there are less terms than that, then other methods apply. So our first example asks us to factor 3x squared minus 8x plus 5. The leading coefficient there, the 3, is of course not equal to 1. And so we're going to use something called factoring by decomposition. You should have seen this before. The first step for that is to multiply the leading coefficient, the quadratic coefficient of 3, times the constant. 3 times 5, of course, is a positive 15. And now I want to find two factors of 15 that will add to equal the coefficient of my middle term. You might think about breaking down the 15 as 3 times 5, but when I add those together, I get a positive 8. I need a negative 8, so clearly I get to get some negatives in there. However, they have to multiply to be a positive 15, so obviously both of them have to be negative, and doesn't take too much to see that that then would be a negative 3 times a negative 5 is equal to a positive 15, but adds to be a negative 8, which is what I'm looking for there. So now I'm going to take my expression and use decomposition to break apart that middle term. The idea here is that I'm going to take my middle term and break it apart using what I found to the side there. So I get 3x squared minus 3x minus 5x plus 5. You should always be sort of double checking yourself as you go along. You'll notice here that minus 3x minus 5x is indeed equal to negative 8x. So double check things as you're moving along. Now the next step that you want to do is to group. We're going to do factoring by grouping at this point. A very common thing that students like to do is to throw some parentheses in there in order to help themselves see the grouping. Do not do this. Do not use parentheses to show yourself the grouping. There are some correct ways that you can do this, but most students are going to mess this up if they put it in. I've already written an expression that is not correct here. I've written 3x squared minus 3x times the quantity negative 5x plus 5. So parentheses are not useful here just yet. If you feel like you need something, some visual aid to help see the grouping, just put a bracket underneath the pairings that you're grouping up there. That would be a better approach to this. So now I look at the first two terms and I see if they have a common factor, which I notice is 3x. So I'm going to factor out a 3x from those first two terms. Factoring out really means divide by. If I take 3x squared and I divide by x, I am left with x. And if I take minus 3x and divide by x, I'm left with minus 1. Now for the next piece of this, I want to make sure I keep this sign when I do the next piece. So I'm going to keep that subtraction. Then I look at the next two terms and I ask myself what is common there, and it's a 5. But what I've actually factored out, this is very important, what I've actually factored out is a negative 5. So I need to keep that in mind as I'm working. Remember that factor out really means divide by. If I take negative 5x and I divide by negative 5, I get positive x. If I take positive 5 and divide by negative 5, I get a negative 1. You of course can always make sure that this is making sense because you can multiply this back together and in fact you should double check yourself there to make sure that that worked. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x and negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 so indeed that factorization worked there. Now we'll notice of course that what we have are common factors. I have this common factor of x minus 1 for these two terms, so I'm going to factor out the x minus 1, and when I do that, dividing the first thing there by x minus 1 leaves me a 3x, dividing the second thing by an x minus 1 leaves me 
minus 5, and there is the factorization of our original expression. Again, something that would be really, really helpful to make sure that you're doing is to multiply all this back out and make sure that it works out. Checking yourself is absolutely critical to factoring, and the beautiful thing about factoring though is that it is so easy to check yourself. All you need to do is to multiply it back together and make sure that it gives you what you want. Let's look at our next example here now. Um, actually, I want to go back and look at one more thing on this last one. Remember that we had the 15 and we had broken it down into negative 3 and negative 5. And you may be asking, does it matter which one I put at the beginning? What if instead I had broken down the negative 8x as negative 5x and then a minus 3x? This is actually not going to make a difference in the long run, but it does make a little bit of a difference as we're trying to get the factoring by grouping to work. So looking at those first two terms, I notice that the only thing that's common is an x. 3x squared divided by x is 3x, and negative 5x divided by x is a negative 5. As I mentioned before, you always want to make sure you bring down that sign right here. So I'm going to put a subtraction. And then I look at those next two terms and I say, well, they don't have anything that's common. That's true, sort of, except of course, everything has a common factor of one. So what I'm going to do is to factor out one, but what I really am factoring out is a negative one. Remembering that factoring out means divide by. Negative 3x divided by negative 1 is positive 3x. And positive 5 divided by negative 1 is negative 5. That's really good to see that there because I wanted to make sure that I had those common factor. I had to have a common factor when I do this process. Factoring out that common factor of 3x minus 5. I'm left with x minus 1, which is the same factorization that we had before. Make sure you double check yourself, but I just wanted to show that the order in which you use those two factors there to decompose your middle term doesn't really matter. So now we're ready for our next example, which asks us to solve 26x squared is equal to 24x minus 8x cubed. One of the first concepts here that's really critical about solving quadratic or cubic or other polynomial equations is that they have to be equal to zero first. That's absolutely critical. So I need to move things around in order to make this equal to zero. I also want to make sure that my leading coefficient is positive. In this case, my leading coefficient is 8x cubed. I want it to be positive, so I'm actually going to move everything to the left here. So I'll get an 8x cubed plus 26x squared minus 24x is equal to 0. You want to put them in descending order of powers. The other thing that you might see here is that they all have a common factor of 2x. And in fact, I could have even seen that up above here. And you might be very, very, very tempted to divide out a 2x. You never, ever, ever want to do that when solving an equation. You do not divide through by 2x. You will lose some answers, which we'll kind of see later. If you're tempted to do that, if you're tempted to divide through by a variable expression, what that's a hint about is that you actually should first factor out a common monomial factor of those three terms. And this is actually the first rule of factoring. Look for any common monomials that you can factor out. So factoring out a 2x, I will be left with a 4x squared plus 13x minus 12. That all is going to equal 0. And now I see a pretty um, straightforward quadratic expression there that I need to factor. The leading coefficient of that is not 1, and therefore I'm going to use my factoring by decomposition method. I'll change colors here a little bit. So I'm going to multiply the 4 times negative 12 and get negative 48. 
So I need to find two factors of negative 48 that are going to add to be 13. Now the fact that that's a negative 48 means one of those factors needs to be negative and one of the factors needs to be positive. You may start off sort of thinking about the basics there. Oh, I know that 6 times 8 is 48, but when I add negative 6 and 8, I get 2. And you may think, well, let me just reverse that. Maybe I'll make it a negative 8 and a positive 6, but that just gives you negative 2. It just changes the sign of what you have there. So that's not really very helpful there. So you try to think about some other combinations here. You might think about 24 and negative 2. Um, we're pretty sure that the, the larger number needs to be positive. The one that has the greater absolute value actually needs to be positive in order to get a positive 13. But unfortunately, when I add these, I get positive 22. That's a little too much, not what I'm wanting. You might even think, oh, wait, 12 times negative 4. I know that 12 times negative 4 is equal to negative 48, but that gives me an 8. It's a little better, but not quite what we're looking for. And many people at this point might think, well, I've, I've found every, I've looked at everything. That's all the possibilities there are. And really, that's not true. You, of course, also have 48 times negative 1, but that's not going to do us any good. That's going to give us 47. But another combination that many people don't think about with 48 is 16 and 3. 16 times negative 3 is a negative 48, and when I add those, I get a positive 13. So one of the things that I really want to emphasize here is you can't say that it doesn't factor. You can't say that this method doesn't work if you haven't actually tried every possible factorization of that number up there. All right, so now I have a factorization for this. I know how I'm going to decompose my middle term. I'm going to break it into a plus 16x and a minus 3x. Minus 12 is equal to 0. Of course, I'm just going to do a quick little double check there. Is positive 16x minus 3x equal to 13x? Yep, that worked out. You do want to check that for yourself. Now I'm going to use factoring by grouping. I may want to put those brackets in there to help myself see it. And because I'm going to already have some parentheses from the grouping, plus I have the grouping that was already there to keep this separate from the 2x, I may want to bump up to some brackets for that outer grouping symbol. So now looking at the 4x squared plus a 16x, I notice that I have a common factor of 4x. I divide that out and I get x plus 4. I carry down the sign that is in between there and I look at the next piece and I see that I have a 3 that is common, but what I'm really dividing out is a negative 3. Negative 3x divided by negative 3 is x and negative 12 divided by negative 3 is positive 4. That's really good because now I have that common factor of x plus 4 that has to be there in order for this method to continue. So I have a 2x. I'm going to factor out an x plus 4 and now I don't need the extra grouping symbols so I can just go back down to parentheses and my other factor, my final factor is 4x minus 3. All of that is now equal to 0 and so we're going to use the zero product principle, a very important concept. If you're not familiar with that, make sure you ask about it because it's very critical and why we had to make this equal to zero. It's also why we did not throw away the 2x because that's actually going to give us one of our answers for this. So the zero product principle says that I can set each of those factors equal to zero. This gives me x is 0, this gives me x is negative 4, and this gives me that x is equal to 3 fourths. And therefore, I was able to solve this. A few ideas there that were important for us. It must equal 0 before you factor. You need to keep the leading coefficient positive, if at all possible. It makes things a lot easier. And the first rule of factoring is to factor out common factors, but do not divide through or divide them out. Simply factor them out and then use your zero product principle.